Everything in life starts from the mind. To achieve anything of substance in life, therefore, we must possess a great mindset. Mindset refers to the aggregation of an individual's thought patterns, beliefs, values, norms, idiosyncrasies, and mental dispositions, all of which combine to determine the individual's worldview, associations, self-image, habits, behaviors, and aspirations. Mindset is thus a key factor in business success and it behoves of any entrepreneur who desires successful outcomes to constantly polish and fine-tune their mindsets. Our conversation on today's episode is with a mindset coach who is also a senior pastor at Dare to Dream Christian Center. Welcome, Pastor Yemi Adeoti. Now, I've heard you say often on your program, Dare to Dream, that mindset is everything. Everything stands or falls on mindset. That's true, sir. Please extrapolate for us. Well, actually, our mindset is one of the major determining factors of what we become in life. And uh, if you look at life, generally speaking, uh, who we become, what we achieve, everything can still be, you know, uh, ultimately tracked back to our mindset. So it's important to have the right kind of mindset if you really want to succeed in life or at whatever you do. So mindset actually shapes our life in general. Can you please break it down to us? Um, this mindset, what makes up a mindset? What are the things, the elements, the elements that okay. makes up a human being's mindset? Well, essentially, our mindset is determined by several things. Okay. Like somebody was saying at that time, our mindset essentially is our self-perception, our belief system. In other, way, in other words, rather, the way we think, the way we look at things, and our upbringing, training, education, even our faith, affects how our mindset shapes out. So, if I understand you correctly, you seem to be telling us that just as the computer operates based on its programming, the human operates based on its mindset exactly, programming. Exactly, exactly. And the softwares that program the mind of an individual are his belief system. Exactly. His value system. Exactly. His credo or religious idiosyncrasies. Exactly. His social acculturation process. Exactly, exactly. As well as his outlook, his outlook on life. life. That's true. And what this software Evidence is what determines the programming of a mind. Exactly, exactly. And if I can extrapolate also from there, it means all of your behaviors, your decisions, your actions, your habits, and your lifestyle are going to be determined by that programming. It is, it is. Essentially, what a man is made up of in general, everything can still be tracked back to our mindset. That's why it's, it's such a major determining factor of how we behave, but how we do things and how we even make decisions. So it's a major, major key factor. What we do, how we do it, our style. <laughs> exactly. So it seems as if that's the hub. <laughs> Really, you know, like that somebody was saying at that time to trying to define mindset. He said mindset is actually the way our mind has been set or programmed. Hmm. So if the mind is programmed wrongly, then the output definitely will be, you know, negative. Yeah, just but, like the computer. <laughs> garbage in, garbage out. Garbage out, that's true. That's true. That's true. So how come we don't pay attention to it? Well, I, I think from my own observation over the years, uh, if you look at our educational system, hmm. if you look at our, even our upbringing too, our upbringing. you know, nobody really tells us to pay attention to our minds are being set or programmed. So obviously, I think most people stumble or discover it maybe by accident mm -hmm. or as a result of their maybe deliberate search. So really, I don't think in all our yeah. society, especially this part of the world, yeah. it's not something we really pay a lot of attention to. Yeah, because um, a couple of years ago, about 12 years ago, I went for a course at the Coaching Academy in the UK on personal performance coaching. And it was there that I was first brought into a realization of 
the importance of our belief system to all of our decisions and actions, including exactly. the food we prefer, the exactly. clothes we prefer, that all of these things emanate from the mindset. That's and true. the more I listen to your program, the more it is reinforced in me. And the, from the time I started to pay attention to it, I found that I was getting the kind of results that I desired. Mm. And that's why I asked that question that, if it is so important as I have come to discover it is, how come our education doesn't talk about it? <laughs> Both formal education and that's informal true. education. Formal education. That's and at any rate, because I found the treasure of how mindset is directly linked to our outcomes, that's to true. the results we get, that's, that's why I found it necessary to feature mindset on this program. Even though this program is about entrepreneurship, it's about succeeding in business, I've decided that it will be very uh, it will be it will be very good if we can explore how That's the human mind works. works. So how the human mind works? How does it work? Well, you, you you see, essentially the way the Creator has made it, it's like you rightly said at that time. What you put into your mind determines what you get out of it. The mind is a very powerful organ. Very, very, very it's like somebody even said it's a powerful machine. It's you know almost like the computer. They so, said it's even <laughs> more powerful than the computer. <laughs> more powerful, really. Yeah. I said I, I read somewhere, and these are neuroscientists. Okay. And they have told us that the most efficient computer okay. is less than zero point zero 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 five percent as our efficient mind. as the weakest human brain. Wow. Uh, human mind. <laughs> human mind. So, which means human imagination uh, of is, course, is like awesomely somebody said, fantastic. It... I appreciate the fact that you've been able to set the parameters for the discussion. Yes, sir. And I appreciate the fact that you said the starting point is understand your self image. Exactly. How do you see yourself? Exactly. And then the next thing is for you to be very intentional and deliberate about what you expose your mind to. Exactly. The kind of exactly. information that the mind is exposed to exactly. will determine the mind's programming. Mm -hmm. What other things do we need to be mindful of? I mentioned at the beginning that even our faith yeah. has a lot of role to play in how you know we see ourselves. Because man is first and foremost a spiritual exactly. being. Exactly. Before he's exactly. any other thing. Exactly. So that also shapes or helps in forming the right kind of mindset. Uh, when you look at most faiths, you know, definitely you see heroes, you see champions, you see figures mm -hmm. of people mm -hmm. who have achieved greatness, mm -hmm. not minding their background or their challenges. Mm -hmm. So that can sort of like well, inspire faith also, will draw strength and confidence from that to believe also that, okay, if they can do that with, okay. you know, the creator also on our side, then that can also be achieved. Because you also touched earlier on one having a can-do attitude. Exactly. A positive can-do mentality. Exactly. And that requires courage and faith. Exactly. So one's faith exposure can help to either reinforce and expand one's ability to... I, I once inter interviewed the owner of FIFA. Okay. And um, he said something that I took away. He said, I don't believe anything is impossible. That's true. If you want me to do something, just tell me that thing is <laughs> impossible. And that, that, for him, is what has helped him a lot. Like that, this, there like are some baptized. things he has achieved in his life that he looks back and he thinks, how did I achieve that? Mm. And the answer, I guess, always goes back to that, it is possible. It's possible. It is you possible. can do it. That's true. And so that's your self-outlook which is very important for you That's to true. confront and combat and overcome challenges, will be helped by the kind of faith you expose yourself to. That's true. That's, That's true. quite deep, sir. It is. It is. Uh, you, you know, like Riley said, that man is first and foremost spiritual. They talk about Before the other things. So that plays a major role in, you know, the things that helps in shaping our mindset. Uh, another thing I need to mention, though, apart from the previous things I mentioned that helps in shaping our mindset is also, you, you, you know, um, we spoke about the other time, maybe the kind of information that you, you know, you, you have you expose access, your mind I, to. I, I mean, I may expose yourself to. Coming up. 
funny thing about the way the mind operates is that uh, things you deposited there, beliefs that you've held on to, doesn't just disappear overnight or no, evaporate. Because they are ingrained. They're ingrained. And there has to be a deliberate, intentional effort mm. on the part of anybody who wants to achieve success in their business endeavor. You have to reprogram your mind. Beyond that also, um, it's important to also, you know, uh, the way affirmations, affirmation or what we call confession, you know, also plays a major role in how your mind is shaped. Um, Repeated, repetitive exactly, affirmations. Exactly. Uh, it has been discovered from psychology that what we say with our mouth, you know, also has an effect on our mind. So the kind of affirmation that you make has to be positive. It has to be that I can do it, you know, uh, see yourself also accomplishing that because what you ultimately say, your confession ultimately becomes your reality mm. in life. Mm. Now, like they say that confession brings possession. So you, 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 you can't be saying stuff like, I can't do it, I don't have the opportunity, I don't have the means, uh, maybe I'm disadvantaged, all sorts kind of things we still oh, have a negative. Oh, I'm a victim. Having a victim mentality doesn't even help matters at all. Because uh, like you rightly said the other time, uh, when you look at most great people who have achieved one thing or the other, in whatever field of life, they face challenges. Yes, they've come from difficult, you know, backgrounds. Mm -hmm. So, uh, giving an excuse as per maybe being a victim uh, does not justify. It's like programming your mind to fail. Exactly, exactly. And maybe I should probably make mention Please. of something. Please, uh, uh, you know, because of the baggages we have picked up in life mm -hmm. while growing up, while growing up and going through life. Exactly. Part of the things that I think most people will have to go through the path is that you have to reprogram even your mind. Reprogram it. You have to because there's a lot of junk, and you know the funny thing about our mindset, the funny thing about the way the mind operates is that uh, things you deposited there, beliefs that you've held on to. Doesn't just disappear overnight or no, evaporate. Because they are ingrained. They're ingrained. So, so it, you have to uproot it. <laughs> exactly. You, you got to do a lot of, you know, work. That's why I, I also believe that there has to be a deliberate, intentional effort hmm. on the part of anybody who wants to achieve success in their business endeavor. You have to reprogram your mind. And that means I have to be open to new thoughts, new ideologies, new ways of doing things. Uh, otherwise, I will be limited because of those negative thought patterns exactly. that has been established in my mind. And uh, you, you know, like you rightly said at that time, our mind is a very powerful machine. It is. The truth is that we don't pay much attention to it. Some of the things that... And that's why we suffer. That's why lot, we toy. A lot. A lot. So, so, so just as the military people do, where when you are being um, admitted into the military now, they do a program of debriefing. <laughs> so debriefing is about they removing every other thing you have thought was I'm, good or was that's true right. or was working. They will take it out of you and put their own. This, this, this is how we want you to begin to think. To this is how we think. want to begin to see so, life. So a man must consciously debrief himself. Exactly. When he's going into a new aspirational territory. Now let's go to the debriefing. I'm happy you have told us that the mindset that brought you to where you are mm -hmm. may not take you to where you want to go. Definitely. And for that reason, you have to begin to consciously and intentionally reprogram that exactly. mind so that exactly. it can deliver, you can deliver the results that you desire. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I, I think first and foremost, yes, uh, part of the de uh, debriefing you know, process, where I start, uh, I, I need to make mention that some of the processes I'm going to be mentioning now, or the steps I'm going to be mentioning now, are things that you have to keep working at. It's a continuous process. It's not process. a one-off thing. Never a one-off thing. Because all the steps I'm going to a mention... A lifelong, continuous exactly, process. Exactly. You must commit yourself to the fact that this is the way I'm going to be living henceforth. Because 
like like we mentioned the other time, some of these thoughts pattern, negative thought patterns, mm. have been there for years. Yes. So we are, we are not talking about something like it's a one-off, uh, something you do once and you'll be sorted. No, it's something you have to do every day. So what are the steps? That I need to take if I'm going to debrief my I mindset re, reprogram. and reprogram my mindset. I think you know everything stems back again to some of the things I mentioned. Then, which has to do with first and foremost, uh, you have to begin to receive the right kind of information mm. because whatever you receive or whatever kind of information you receive, I mean, will affect how your mind is going to come out. So then, you, you, you need to begin to get your mind to receive new new truth. ideas, new truths, new ideologies. And I think one of the places you pick these things from uh, are like, you know, books, books of successful people who have achieved success. Exactly. In the area of business or enterprise. Uh, at times, it will serve you also well if you can find a mentor along the same line of uh, business, somebody who has succeeded. Mm -hmm. I remember years ago when somebody introduced this book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, Poor Dad. You know, Robert Kiyosaki, mm -hmm. very, uh, just made you know, news all around the world, several series. You, you see that he was brought up by a poor dad, yeah. but his mentor was really a rich dad. Yeah. And you could see how that helped. So he, 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 he failed in business. Exactly. Because he was applying his poor dad exactly. mentality. mentality. <laughs> and then when he sought out his rich dad, who is a father of his friend, That's true. that one began to mentor him. Exactly. And he, he began to receive reprogramming. Exactly. His mind began to receive reprogramming. That's true. So besides books, you will recommend mentoring. I will. I will. Because truth about the fact is that your mentors are being to where you are trying to be. Yeah. I mean, trying to go. Yeah. And yeah. they've acquired the mentality exactly. you are trying to acquire. Exactly. They have the experience. They have the exposure. Uh, although I need to make mention of something because you, you pointed that out too, that failure is also part of success. Uh, yeah. the, the fact yeah. that you are reprogramming, I mean, reprogramming your mind and doing all the debriefing does not mean that you might not fail, mm -hmm. but with the right kind of mindset, you know that failure is not the end. Failure becomes the a building block exactly. of success with the right kind of you, mindset. You know, just like a small child, how does a child learn to walk? Mm. By falling. Yes. How does a child learn to speak? By stuttering. stuttering. You know, it's in the process of trying it again and again that he or she perfects the heart of speaking mm -hmm. and walking. Mm -hmm. Because I, I think once again, we we'll probably also need to mention the fact that when we are talking about reprogramming your mind, that doesn't mean that you won't fail. Yeah. Uh, but you know, there's a difference between uh, I have failed and I'm a failure. Mm -hmm. Because you must see failure as a situation, not a person. You must see failure as an opportunity to learn and so that you can improve and you can, you know, not repeat the same so kind of mistakes. failure is a stairway. It is. It's a staircase. It is. In fact, that's why somebody said, I think it was John Maxwell, who said that uh, we should learn to fail forward. Mm -hmm. That's fail forward. profiting from our failures failure. instead of, because most people, once you experience a setback, or an obstacle, people just feel that that's the end of the road. Mm. Uh, rather, you should learn the lesson and move forward. True. And you know, the truth about failure, again, is that if you don't learn the lesson, you keep repeating the same mistakes, True. and you don't get qualified for promotion until you pass the test. Wow, that's quite deep. So, <laughs> so when, when we talk about books, I reckon that's a generic term to okay, include yeah. all publications, <laughs> uh, magazines, newspapers, exactly. sections. Because I, 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 I watched a, a documentary of uh, Magic Johnson. Oh, okay. That, the former great uh, Orlando Magic. Is yes. It, the player, uh, the basketball. LA Lakers. Yeah, okay. Yes. LA Lakers. Basketball. So basketball. And uh, Magic Johnson was a very, very hugely successful basketball That's person. True. Then he, he had some issues with his health. He That's contracted true. HIV. Yep, yep. And that brought his career crashing down. Mm -hmm. He was depressed and all of that. And then he decided he wanted to go into business. Mm -hmm. So he started to seek out mentors. Wow. And he said the 
a great mentor is sought out, a very successful black businessman. Okay. The first question he asks them is, what do you read when you mm. open the newspaper? Wow. And Magic <laughs> Johnson said, oh, I told him, I sports. read the sports <laughs> section, of course. <laughs> I guess as much. So if we're going to reprogram our mm. mindset, what we read is important. It is very Books, important. magazines, exactly. newspapers, journals, exactly. and whatever. Exactly. exactly. I reckon electronic and digital products like tapes, CDs will, will really fun. come in handy. Very, very. And I think in this age, you know, thank God for technology, I think we have not leveraged effectively enough on, you know, the options technology gives us. Right now, in the comfort of your home or anywhere you are, you could go online. One of my Without mentors, <laughs> who is very, very deeply knowledgeable about contemporary business practices and theories. Okay. I asked him one day, I said, you've been mentoring me now for about six, seven years. Mm. You don't read. I don't see you read. <laughs> How come you know all these all things this <laughs> that makes us marvel, that makes us knock at your doorstep? Mm. He said, well, I don't like to read. I don't like reading. Mm. I said, so how come you know them? And he brought out his iPad. He said, wow. I'm always on YouTube. Do you see that? Now? I watch management videos on There's YouTube. There's a lot of products. I never knew. <laughs> you know, I said, I, I watch management videos on YouTube. I listen to management audio on podcast. That's true. That's another very, very that excellent. I do that a minimum of six hours every day. Ooh. I said six hours a day, yeah. That's uh, investing, you know, in himself. And updating himself and from with relevance. The day he said that, I began to look at him differently. <laughs> okay. If you look at the trend in the world today, where we're going, where at the having your, you know, maybe your phone yeah, or whatever, your phone. you can assess most videos, most information at the tip. So most people prefer the video mm. uh, because it's something that you can listen to yeah. at your leisure time with your headphones, you know, connected. You could be anywhere on bus, in your car or whatever. And you're learning. Yeah. You're, you know, upgrading your knowledge well, and yeah, you're getting up around. to date with whatever you need to know. So, I know, like we rightly said also that the process of renewing the mind mm -hmm. or debriefing, as you like uh, to, to or mention, reprogramming. or reprogramming, is a continuous effort. Lifelong. So, you could be anywhere really, in your car, uh, your way to walk, and you could still be going on with the process. Wow. Excuse me. So, if, if reading is not your thing, then you can do YouTube, podcasting, exactly. among other things. You also talked about the association that we very have buried ourselves in. Very, very important. Please extrapolate more on that. Well, you know, like somebody said, if you want to know how to swim, yeah. you need to associate with the fish. Hmm. You want to know how to fly, you walk with the board. You want to know how to, you know, uh, run. Yes. You need to walk with somebody who is also an expert in that field. Mm -hmm. Because really, it has been discovered one of the major determining factor of success is our association. You become like the kind of people you associate with. Okay. Okay. Either good or bad. So for instance, if I'm trying to you know, uh, acquire skills, In uh, knowledge, entrepreneurship, I need to follow the path of the people who have gone ahead of me. And like Riley said, it would be difficult to assess a Dangote, for instance now, in terms of seeing him physically or seeing Bill Gates or the rest of them. Yeah. But you could assess their products, you could assess maybe their books. Through or technology. Through technology. So in, in a way, you are still, you know, because when you read somebody's book or you listen to a video that somebody produced, you are actually exploring the mindset. Mm -hmm. Of that, of that person. So you may not really have the opportunity to be one-on-one -on -one with the person, mm -hmm. but you are actually, you know, entering into the mind of the person, so to say. Yeah. Uh, you're acquiring whatever, you know, knowledge or expertise he or she possesses. Though people say, though, you that your network. success principles are universal, but since we are talking about business and entrepreneur, you know, for instance, I think we make 
much more sense mm -hmm. to work with people in that field. I agree. Because they'll speak your language. I agree. Uh, they, they know what, you know, you're, you're going through. Yeah. Your pains, your challenges, there are things that they are well acquainted with. Yes, and, and, and that's what they discuss every day anyway. If that's your world, that's where they live. So you, 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 you want to be a successful entrepreneur and you're hanging around your old schoolmates who are job oh, seekers. Oh, no, no, that's a They are job thing. seekers. No, that's a misfit. <laughs> So, that's so, a so, so the association it is matters critical. A lot. I, 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 you know something again, yes. I think I may probably even chip in here though that from my little experience over the years along this field, I think one will still need to find a mentor that you can assess in the business field. Mm -hmm. And the reason I say so is because... In a physical uh, sense. Exactly. Yeah, the, the, the reason I say so is because some things are taught, some things are caught. True. And, you know, it's not everything like that... Would, exactly. It's not everything that would be said. No. But when you are with the person, there's a way, you know, like iron sharpens iron, there's a way you contact and you receive, you know, sort of like you know, from the person. So it's important to have. So some things are taught, some things are caught. Are caught. And if you hang around a mentor physically, there are some things that will be ministered to your spirit as exactly. it were. Exactly. Through his nuances, exactly. his comportment, exactly. his carriage, exactly. and even basically his posture. I mean, somebody told me that the posture of a person can program your mind. <laughs> it can, it can. You know, like somebody has said the other time that success is contagious, uh, that, you know, still talking about law of association, mm -hmm. uh, that y if you see anybody successful in any field of endeavor, if you can learn their attitude, their mannerisms, their mindset, and do the things they do, you are likely to reproduce the same kind of success. You, you also touched on affirmation. That's something a lot of us don't do in our time. In fact, <laughs> I'm also guilty. Until recently, I would laugh at people who do affirmations. Ah. But in the last few years, I have a friend who has used this successfully to grow her business. Definitely. And because I know she does it, <laughs> I, and I started to see before my very eyes, her, sister, her, her business begin to grow. grow. I started to practice it. Mm. And I've seen it beginning to gradually it bring will. positive reward and outcomes my way. Because you see, the truth of the matter is that our words dominate us. Our words dominate it does. us. And you know, our words carry weight beyond what we think or what we imagine. Words also has the capacity to create atmospheres. So when you say positive words or you say negative words, you are setting into motion the kind of atmosphere you want, you know, to, to harvest. So uh, take, for instance, somebody's the business that if I'm speaking negativity, I'm speaking the challenges, I'm speaking all what I have to deal with instead of, you know, speaking the right kind of words mm. into my business, I'll be activating some things I would definitely not want to read. So I, 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 watch, I, I think from the field of uh, psychology mm -hmm. and some other you know, faces of science, this has been it's established been that yeah. what we say carries a lot of weight. Uh, so it, it programs all of that. It does. It does. Coming up. So meditation is a very powerful tool. In fact, I know of very successful men and women, the world of business, the world of uh, academics, or the world of uh, you know ministry. They don't play with the subject of meditation. It's It actually applies to every things. area of life. You know, there's a law called the law of attraction, yes. which says, you know, what you attract or what the universe, you know, pulls in pulls your direction your is connected to what you say. So when I release words, I'm actually activating the law of attraction. Mm. What would come in my direction, uh, what would be my experience, mm -hmm. 
uh, will tally what I'm saying mm -hmm. as long as I also believe it. Because I also need to mention that affirmations work when you believe what you say. Okay. Because I can't just be making vain or baseless uh, uh, association, I mean, affirmation words. rather, or words that I don't believe. Okay, so you've got it. to believe you've it. You've got to believe in it also. So what it's about important. meditation? Oh, does it help it in does. mental reprogramming it does. as well? I, I, you know, if you look at what meditation really is all about, meditation is thinking and speaking. It's connected. It's pondering. You know, it, it's like the product of your thoughts, and your words okay. and you know the way going back again to the mind you know because meditation is something that is also connected to our mind mm -hmm. and if if i'm involved in the right kind of affirmations and i receive or process the right kind of thoughts mm -hmm. it's going to help in producing the right kind of mindset true because when we talk about meditation we still have to talk about our mind because that's the origin because our mind itself, you know, that's a compartment of our soul. Yes. We have essentially the soul is made up of the mind, the soul, and the emotions. Emotions. And all of these things, they work together. In integrative alliance. Exactly. So meditation is a very powerful tool. In fact, I know of very successful men and women. Uh, when I say men and women, this cuts across every any field, the world of business, the world of uh, academics, or the world of... Um, you know, ministry, they don't play with the subject of meditation. It's something they do quite early in the morning because that's also key to just set your day. You know, uh, it's like programming your day your or day. programming yourself for success. I also would like to know about mental nurturing. Okay. You know, because we've been talking all this while about how entrepreneurs or those who seek to succeed in business or even any endeavor in life. That's true can program their minds for success. Yep. And you also told us just a few seconds ago now that when the mind is at its sharpest, it can be programmed at its best. That's right. Which brings us to nurturing and nourishing of the mind. Mm -hmm. How can we go about achieving that? I, I think some of the things we've said earlier on will come into place. Like for instance, um, maybe one of the things I didn't mention earlier on is, apart from rising up quite early in the day, uh, before you face the business of the day, uh, is also very important. Part of the things that will help in nurturing your mindset is to, you know, have a thinking place. A thinking place. Like that's a, part of the zone. That's part of the thing that helps to nurture your mind. So, um, so you must yeah. consciously set aside a, exactly. a space uh, for well, thinking. Maybe your own private space or your special spot, like some people say, yeah. uh, where I can't be disturbed. Because part of the things that you realize that we don't do often is that we don't think. We don't think at all. <laughs> you will take it for that. <laughs> it's a society, we don't, <laughs> we don't, we, we don't like to think. Uh, and you know, it's when you're in the process of thinking, maybe in a quiet, relaxed atmosphere, that's when ideas, that's when concepts, that's when things start dropping okay. in. And you know, you begin to say, oh, I didn't see that. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh, how did I miss that? You know, because you have settled down, you're in a relaxed state, and your mind is also functioning at the highest level. So it, it, it's something that for anybody who wants to develop his mental capacity, you need to have a time for thinking or a thinking place is part of the reprogramming of your mind that mm. you have to put in the place mm. if you want your mind to be stronger because you are talking about the mindset mm -hmm. uh, essentially if you're going to have a champion's mindset as a businessman or mm -hmm. entrepreneur then your mind must be stronger yeah so the way you nurture your body you got to nurture your, your mind. mind too what are the instruments that you can use to bring that up. I've had some people go to the riverside, some go into the woods, some go to yeah, the Yeah, that's true, that's true. Some will go when the moon is at a particular <laughs> level. I mean, I've read of some successful Asian businessmen, you know, the ones who run the major brands that we celebrate now. Okay. And they go to look for the moon. 
Mm. And they want to think around the moon. <laughs> so, uh, and some, they're always in the dark. <laughs> you know, uh, I've had people who think best when they put up the light and they're in a very dark room. Mm. And it begins to make me think, are these really the tournaments <laughs> of thinking? <laughs> I'm thinking. So by way of nurturing your mind, nourishing your mind, would you, what would you advocate? Well, for me, I always tell people, find out what works best for you. Find what works best for you. Yeah, because you see, for somebody who's looking for the moon, or somebody who stays in the dark, maybe that's his natural terrain. That's his preference. Everybody has preference in terms of what works for you. Like, you know, some people are early birds, some people are late risers, some people function best at a particular time. So for me, I wouldn't advocate that you need to follow someone's, you know, method. You know yourself. Explore. You know exactly. Until you discover what works best for exactly. you. Exactly. You know how you function and how you function at your highest level. Once you find your sweet spot, mm. like they call it, it will be easy. Every other thing will just flow. Easily. Effortless. Effortless. So for me, that is key. Because yeah. some will say classical music helps them. <laughs> Some will say gospel music helps them. That's true. And for gospel music, some will say, no, it has to be the praise worship. <laughs> and for some will say, no, 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 no. You know, generally it has been proven to, that music has a way of helping your mind to relax, though. Science you know, has proven that, that. Has proven that effectively. So it could create a good, you know, kind of uh, background or atmosphere for somebody who wants to, you know, rejuvenate his mind. Though, I, I will not advocate any, you know, uh, ironclad one. I would just say, discover what works, works best for you. For you and explore. And, and, and explore. Be open. But well, in terms of finding what works for you, there are, there are artificial river sounds now. Exactly. There are artificial sounds for brooks, for, I mean, for some, is the chirping of the birds. Mm. When the birds are just chirping in the background, it helps their brain. So they go to parks and gardens, you know, to Parks and gardens are actually ideal, but if you look at our setup society here, we don't have a lot of parks. We don't have. We don't. So that may not work with typical Nigerian. Work, you know, so, but if that's your thing, <laughs> you could recreate that using technology. Definitely. Like your Definitely. your iPhone or your phone, you could download sounds that that's can true. help you. Uh, for some, is the incense or fragrance or perfumes. For some, it is just artwork or painting. You know, for some, their own nurturing or nourishing of the mind is about sitting in a crowded environment. But I have a friend who tells me that he just likes to sit in crowded environments wow. or in go market, and that's how he gets that's his own in, that's inspiration. In, that's interesting. <laughs> that's quite peculiar. I mean, though. it's as interesting <laughs> as some people will tell you very, very slow music helps mm. their mind, and some will tell you it has to be rap music. <laughs> And some will tell you that to be rock music. Wow, that's really, really So that's hard. why I agree with you when you say find your own sweet spot. Find, find what sweet. works for you. Exactly. But no matter what, ensure that you nourish and nurture your mind daily. Definitely. Get activities that will help you because that is the secret of your success it is. going forward. Exactly. True. What is the place of brainstorming? Oh. Quite, quite interesting question you've asked. Like Dr. Me. Abib would tell me, Abib let me tell you, he said, thinking is the first job of an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. So there must be mind storming, which is you okay, thinking. Okay, thinking through, looking at the possibilities. And brainstorming. brainstorming. All of what we have been talking about up to this now, up till now, <laughs> is mind storming. <laughs> yeah. Everything we've been talking about prior to that's this true. moment is that's mind true. storming. That's true. And that's the first job of an entrepreneur, thinking is the first job of an entrepreneur. That's true. What is the place of brainstorming to mental nurturing? I, I think it does help a lot. Okay. Because apart from the fact that it helps your mind to function or your brain to function at the highest capacity, you know, it's been, it's been discovered that we live in a right dominated kind of world, life, I mean, right side brain. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The right yeah. hemisphere. Exactly. Of the yeah. brain. Because that's, that deals more with logic, mm -hmm. reasoning, what is rational. Mm -hmm. But the left side, uh, the left hand side of the brain deals more with creativity, Emotions. you know, pictures. Mm -hmm. And most of the time, the kind of questions you ask will determine how that sets into place. 
if you ask questions like why, how, is there another way, you are going to be, you know, uh, setting up. Exactly. Is activated. And that is key or crucial to an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. So for, for an entrepreneur or a businessman, I believe very strongly that the issue of, you know, creative thinking, which will come into place as you brainstorm in terms of the options yeah. that's available to you will come into place. So even if you are in the place of brainstorming, you need to ask the right kind of questions so that you can see the right kind of options or answers or solutions to the things you want to bring, you know, into being your business. And brainstorming is about group thinking. Yeah, yeah. And I think I also need to mention the people that you bring on board also matters. matters. Uh, because if you bring on board people who are like, in terms of their mindset, they are negative people, they are going to polarize whatever you're trying to achieve there. So it's important to have people of like minds, mm. people so who every are... every single person that will be on your team exactly. to brainstorm exactly. must be people of like mind. When I say like mind, that means they are positive in terms of the outlook. Yeah. Of course, that does not mean that they agree with you on all things. Of course, they see other side or other angles. In fact, the more they disagree, the better for the brainstorming <laughs> session. Because the that's better. going to activate the creative the process. Coming up. The more I explore the benefit of mindset and programming and reprogramming, the more I'm seeing that those who change the world, those who succeed in the world, mm -hmm. are people who disregard convention exactly. largely. Exactly. Exactly. How can we get our people to understand that when you tell them to interrogate cultural stipulations and dictates, that you're not being rude to culture? Everybody is limited by you. Because what we have these days, largely in our client here, is everybody looks up to the boss. And nobody wants to disagree with the boss. Nobody wants to have a conflicting opinion from that which is held by the boss. That's true. So That's when you are invited to a brainstorming session, people look at the body language of the chief executive and just align and just advise I'll along follow, that I'll line. Follow suit. And it's been found that many CEOs love that. Because when you contradict them, they begin to mark you down for, <laughs> for some form of repression, <laughs> as it were. So, but, but, you seem but, to be advising business people now that that's not the way to go. And I think if you look at the leading businesses today in the yeah. world, the ones that are doing very, very well. very well, you see that they are maximizing the creative you know, uh, intuitions of, of the... people. I think our mm -hmm. tradition, our culture, in a bit us, in a bit. You know, when, when we talk about all this brainstorming, yeah. I, I've been in sessions too that you know you don't want to say something because evidently you know that your boss uh, or an elder, uh, uh, exactly, is going to begin to feel. Uh, what are you saying? You know, you don't want to go against his idea. Mm -hmm. But obviously, somebody has a better or superior idea. And if you are really interested in capturing the market and breaking new grounds in terms of business advancement, I think the superior idea should prevail. Not necessarily the status of not who's bringing all. it, or not the age all. of who's bringing not it, at all. or not even their social standing, or their standing within the organization. Not at all. And I, if, if I may just maybe please, uh, please. interject, please. I discovered that there was a time I spoke with some young entrepreneurs, and I discovered that in actual fact, some of these people left where they were before to establish their own you know brand of business because mm. while they were they were trying to chip in ideas but because the overall boss wasn't really paying attention that that they stepped aside mm -hmm. what was stamped rubbish you know useless is what has now become success it's making ways for there them are now. a number of organizations <laughs> whose history evolution is like what you just explained most of us are slaves to culture that's so this big. is how it's been done. It worked for my grandfather. You can't come in now and tell me this. And the more I explore the benefit of mindset and programming and reprogramming, the more I'm seeing that 
those who change the world, those who succeed in the world, mm -hmm. are people who disregard conventions exactly. largely. Exactly. Exactly. How can we get our people to understand that when you tell them to interrogate cultural mm -hmm. stipulations and dictates, that you are not being rude to culture? Well, I, I think you know it's gonna go it's gonna take a while for us to cross that bridge in this side of the world because you know cultures are things that are really very personal and emotional this, uh, you know in this part of the world but i think the place of teaching training education will help a lot in terms of enlightenment you know campaigns for people to know that the fact that you've held a particular concept that has produced for you in time past does not necessarily mean it's going to produce now. Mm -hmm. um, like one of my mentors used to say that, you know, he has a principle, calls it uh, not being afraid of killing the sacred cow. Wow. Sacred cow simply means maybe systems, uh, programs that has worked mm -hmm. in time past, mm -hmm. no longer relevant, don't have any problem in jettisoning it away. And, Know, exploring new and better ways of doing things. Okay. So for, for me, I, I think in this side of the world, there has to be a lot of education, a lot of enlightenment, a lot of training, exposure, so that the more this, you know, reaches our people in terms of all this campaign going on, people will definitely begin to have a mind shift or a paradigm shift that, oh, well, that's true, you know, mm. there are better ways of doing things, there are newer ways of exploring. So why do I hold on to this when I know that something new can produce mm. probably much more than what I'm experiencing now? So for me, the campaign must be intense. The, you know, the enlightenment has to be ongoing. It has to be sustained. Yeah, so because it's ingrained in the mind of people. If at, at times what people are arguing about, what they are really forcing and arguing about, by the time you pull it to them, you discover that it's not even working. And they are still holding to you, holding. just for you to know how... I can relate to that. <laughs> I can relate these to things that. Are. <laughs> Mindset of people still remain the same it was 40, 50 years ago. Mm. And once the mindset has not shifted or adjusted or been reprogrammed uh, you know like somebody was saying uh you'd be insane to think you're gonna get a different result if you keep doing the same thing <laughs> so <laughs> something has Definition to change of <laughs> Definitely. So paradigm shift very important very important very important i could go on and on listening <laughs> to you pastor Adilti. well fortunately time is not on our side <laughs> but i think we've said enough today to entrepreneurs to business persons out there that the mindset that you bring into your business endeavor into your operations into your practices will go a long way in determining the outcomes or results that you are, that you derive from your effort and i think uh, we can go on and say all these things, paradigm shift, mm -hmm. mental reprogramming, debriefing, among other things, are the things that we need today to get out of the doldrum That's that we right. have found ourselves as entrepreneurs. Pastor Emi Adiosi. It's a pleasure. I thank you so very much program. for making our time of your busy schedule thank you, to sir. be on the program, to share it. with our people these principles that have worked for great men mm -hmm. in business and in other spheres of life. We thank you and appreciate you, sir. I appreciate you always. Thank it's you, a pleasure sir. being on the program today. Thank you, sir. And on that note, we call it wraps on the program today. Thank you so very much for being there with us. Until next time.